before I get into the main subject matter of this one, just uh, I should have really shown this in the last video, but this was the headline of the eye I was talking about in the Starmer Schultz meeting, and I'll just let this speak for itself. You can pause the screen. Starmer must give way on youth migration to keep softer Brexit as a resource to gain so yeah, it speaks for itself. Uh, I'll go, I'll do a close-up actually of the, uh, the bylines here. Yeah, you can pause the screen if you want to read that. Um, and this is from the New European. I don't get this often because it's pricey, but uh, quite a striking cover. Um, uh, it must be artificially generated in the AI thing, but it's quite a striking cover. Not directly related to the, uh, the subject I'm going to talk about, but just thought it was striking. Punching Putin. This is obviously talking about the Kursk incursion. Uh, Putin apparently is um, renewed threats towards the Baltic states in response to what's happening in Kursk, um, claiming uh, that you know it's it's renewed Russian patriotism. It's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell what is the case in Russia. I think what may do, there will be Russian anger against the Ukrainians for this, but they will also see that so so much about that they've been told about Ukrainian Nazis, they will see Ukrainian troops in their land, you know, remember it was Russia that wanted to get rid of borders, um, not committing atrocities, not being the, the monsters that were, they were made out to be. Uh, it will also, you know, regardless of thoughts on Ukraine, it will make Putin look weak. Many Russians will be saying, how did this happen? I thought we were so powerful and invincible. So I think as a strategy, it may actually make sense. But this war is, you know, another 41 killed today in a Russian strike in Ukraine. Um, there's no equivalent massacres in Russia by Ukrainians. It just isn't. Um, so this is not none less than the battle for the freedom of a nation for Ukraine. Um, and that means Europe, really. It's on the front line of the, you know, European security versus Russian tyranny. Anyway, that's uh, that's not what this video is about. Although it's, there will be some overlap and I'll explain why. Um, Germany. Far-right AFD on brink of winning first state election. Now, before I read this article, I know there are a lot of people out there who have this um, reaction when the term far-right is used because they believe that it is used to silence debate and used to stigmatise opponents. My take on the usage of far-right as a term is, yes, it can be thrown around a bit. Just because someone has, Im has strong views on immigration i.e. they feel the need to be tough controls, doesn't make them far right. Also, it is used a bit of a catch-all to kind of label um, label people and put them in the same camp as, for example, Italian fascism or German National Socialism. It's a little bit thrown around. Having said that, I have no problem calling neo-nationalist blood and soil groups far right because that's what they are in the political spectrum groups like uh, basically domestic terrorist types like combat 18 and um, patriotic alternative uh, i think they are bad news i really think that calling those sort of groups far right i have no problem with um, reform and the afd not so much i would say they're hard right as opposed to far right nationalist um as opposed to necessarily far right, that doesn't mean I like them. Um, but, you know, it needs to be understood that this hasn't come about for nothing. I'm going to read the report in a minute, but you know, if we look at Germany, this is a country like many other European countries that has had more than a few Islamist attacks. Most recently, in the town of Solingen, three people killed. When the attacks happened at Cologne, a lot of women were sexually assaulted. Frankly, the left tried to downplay that. This is not normal, and it isn't something that should be just dismissed as, oh, anyone could commit crime. Um, 
when you have a, a large influx of people coming from very different cultures, there is going to be problems in liberal democratic societies. That is just common sense. And what's happened in recent years is traditionally liberal countries like the Nordic states have had to get tougher because there's been a response by nationalist groups. And, and you know, that, like I said, it's some basis to that. But I also would be cautious about kind of saying these people are great patriots. You know, five years ago, there was an assassination in Germany, Walter Lubka. It was very similar circumstances to the murder of Joe Cox. And he was murdered because he advocated for um, refugees to be settled in Germany. Now, whether you agree with that policy or not, the man was murdered in cold blood by a neo-Nazi. Um, and he was a member of a local offshoot of Pegida. Um, so, you know, I have no problem calling that far right when there is clear violent extremism and a nationalist ideology at play. Um, anyway, this report by Sarah March. Alternative for Germany, AFD, was on track yesterday to become the first far right party to win a regional election in Germany since the Second World War exit poll show, but was almost certain to be excluded from power by rival parties. AFD was projected to win a 33.5% of the vote in the state of Thuringia, comfortably ahead of the Conservatives' 24.5% broadcaster, uh, said the EF's exit poll showed. Um, in neighbouring Saxony, the Conservatives led on 32%, just half a percentage point ahead of the AFD. This is a little bit like reform versus the Conservatives in Britain, I would say. You know, the AfD is clearly challenging the CDU and CSU in Germany. The deaf populist Sarah Wagenknecht, a Wagenknecht, I think her name's pronounced Alliance, PSW, which like the AfD demands sharper controls on immigration and wants to stop arming Ukraine came third in both states. I'm not quite sure why the German far left would be against immigration. I can understand why they'd be against arming Ukraine. Uh, but I'm not quite sure why they'd take that stance on immigration. With a year to go until uh, Germany's national election, the results took punishing for Chancellor Olaf Scholz's coalition, though Social Democrats look uh, to have cleared the 5% threshold for staying in the Parliament of both states. But as coalition partners, the Greens and the business friendly Free Democrats look less secure in both parliaments. All parties, including the BSW, have pledged not to allow the AFD in the coalition. Last week, the AFD's leader in Ferengia, Bjorn Hoka, said our freedoms are being increasingly restricted because people are being allowed into the country who don't fit in. A former history teacher has called Berlin's memorial to Nazi Germany's Holocaust of European Jews a monument of shame. He was convicted earlier this year for using a Nazi slogan at a party rally. I saw that um, monument he's referring to in December. And, you know, it was absolutely not hiding anything. It was saying the National Socialist Party murdered Romani, murdered Jews. It's right out there. You wouldn't see something equivalent in Japan or, for that matter, in China over Mao's mass murders. Um, Germany is a country that really, really has confronted its past more than most. I mean, even any sign of Nazi insignia is a criminal offence in Germany. So... That's something that is very much in the German psyche. I do think to some extent, probably there are Germans who are a bit tired of this war guilt. I mean, uh, whenever Germany and Poland have a bilateral meeting, there's always Polish demands for reparations. I think within Germany, there will be some fatigue over this. It's like the war's been over for 79 years, actually, as of yesterday. Um, when, you know, how long are we going to be made to feel guilty about this? I would say there's a fine line between saying, look, are we supposed to feel guilty forever versus getting into the realm of, for example, Holocaust denial. Um, the BBC report, I think it was the BBC, it may have been Channel 4, but regardless, uh, BBC, uh, British report on this um, featured the, the ovens basically at Buchenwald which isn't far from where, uh, from the time they were featuring on the AFD success. Um, my concern about the AFD would be, would they transcend from saying, look, we're not going to feel, be made to feel guilty over this forever, 
and the German culture of self-flagellating, for example, as they would perceive it, versus outright Holocaust denial. Now, if it starts getting into that realm, that's that's erasing history. Um, whether the approach of sort of constant self-shaming is the right approach or not, I don't know, but I do think there would be a thin line between that and then outright denialism. Um, so the AFD needs to make its position clear on that issue. Do they accept the Holocaust happened? Do they accept German culpability for that, for example? And if they don't, that's uh, that would certainly be concerning to German Jews, for example. This victory in Beringia, it shouldn't be exaggerated, it is only one state. Nevertheless, it's the first time since the Second World War, a far right, hard right, depending on how you view it, party has won a statewide election in Germany. So it's quite significant. But the flip side of that is you cannot have a situation where you've had mass immigration in Germany. I think this was one of the worst policies of Angela Merkel in 2015 to allow so many people in at once. Um, you know, her success is now having to pick up the, the legacy of that. You know, basically, you can't let a million people into a country and guarantee security. You just can't. Um, I remember at that time I was in Germany, I was in Düsseldorf, and there was a late night sort of uh, inspection of a train because they thought maybe migrants had snuck on. I mentioned what happened in Cologne, the New Year's uh, Eve attacks. Uh, but also the recent terrorist attack at uh, Solingen. And then there was another Islamist attack in the Berlin Christmas market in, um, I think it was 2016. You know, so the AFD success shouldn't just be dismissed as uh, Germany's had a sudden lurch to, to racism. I think there are very legitimate concerns. And Germany's mainstream parties have to take this seriously. Schultz's approach to toughen immigration in the wake of the Solingen attack makes sense, but some would say, well, he should have been doing this before the attack. Islamism is a problem in Europe, and it shouldn't be a case that when parties respond to this, or when you have like a far right um, rise, then there, there's a, people, particularly on the left, uh, you know, they'll get into counter protests and so on. I know Germany has had a lot of counter protests, but they need to address the issue of Islamist extremism. Ironically, Islamist extremism is, uh, you know, pretty far right itself. Their views on Jews and women and so on itself is pretty far right. But I will say this, um, regardless of what you think uh, with the AFD on issues like immigration, my big issue with uh, a part of the AFD, I do not trust them on Russia. I do not trust the European reactionary hard right when it comes to Russia. I think they're soft on Russia. I think they would um, be very cosy with Putin given half a chance. Look at what's happened in Hungary with Viktor Orban. Um, that's my issue with these sort of nationalist parties. I understand the reaction to mass immigration. I understand the reaction to culture clashes when you have Islamists not integrating into society, for example. What I do not understand and do not accept is the pandering to Putin, who is an enemy of Europe, who has threatened European security. I mean, that is the exact opposite of patriotism, pandered to the Russian tyrant. So if I was German, I would be thinking, well, wait a second, if AFD is so patriotic, um, why, are they, why are they so soft on Putin? You know, why are they... I, I accept that Germany and Russia have had ties regarding, you know, for example, gas supplies that is more profound than Britain and Russia. But Putin is clearly a threat to the whole of Europe. So I, I think it's unfathomable for major European powers to pander to Putin in any way. I just think that is the height of stupidity. Um, if, if something ha should have been learned in recent years, it's that the West cannot trust Putin. When is that lesson going to be learned? You know, so for nationalist parties across Europe to pander to the Russian tyrant is frankly sickening. It's certainly not patriotic. They can talk about Islamism and they can talk about immigration and there's valid concerns there. But 
my big issue, my big distaste for them is their attitude to Putin. Um, anyway, I'll wrap this up. I, I will say this though: the German left, um, the European left in general, need to understand that simply calling people racist is not going to address the problems here. It's going to polarize people, and they're more likely to go for the AfD. I also think that understandable as it is for mainstream parties to try and shut the AFD out. That could be perceived as undemocratic. It could be perceived as ignoring those people who are voting AFD. So it could backfire. Now, I'm sure I'll get a few reaction responses on this video. I've tried to be very clear. I do think the term far right is thrown around a bit. I don't think someone is far right just because they recognise the threat from Islamism. I don't even think someone is far right if they vote AFD. Um, I wouldn't trust the AFD, but that's just me. I understand why they have got successful. I understand because they, they've said, look, this is a problem. We need to deal with it. I don't trust them in wider areas, but I understand why they've got success. And Schultz needs to, as does Starmer, you know, need to realise that there is a background to this. There is a basis as to why these parties are getting successful. Um, Although I would say it's more pronounced in mainland Europe than it is in Britain. I mean, even reform is pretty moderate compared to, for example, the Front National in France. Um, so I think Britain is relatively moderate by comparison. And it has to be said, you know, even though there was people on the right, I think, going out of their way to sort of downplay what happened this summer, um... The likes of Combat 18, Patriotic Alternative, National Action, we shouldn't exaggerate their influence. I really don't think they have a huge amount of support. And I honestly don't think, as much as I don't like reform, I don't like Farage, I don't trust Farage, I really don't think the average reform voter is a racist, of course not. Um, and I don't think the average AFD supporter is a racist either. I think people have legitimate concerns about mass immigration and people not integrating into European society, that is a critical issue. I mean, I, I, I approach this from a point of, yes, there has to be human compassion for people who really need refuge, but if someone is coming to a European country and they're refusing to integrate and they're carrying repressive values with them, they clearly don't belong in Europe. Um, I think the left is profoundly naive about this issue. Anyway, that's my take on it.